decks are very tailored towards each Ooh, other. Um, so. This is very different. So For Team Liquid, it's the same in terms of bands, but Team Secret definitely changed. For Spirit, so Secret saw the bands last game, and I guess yeah. banking on Liquid not wanting to give away a jungler. Yeah. So they can Earth Spirit first. And they're up 1-0, they may be expecting something, not so that Earth is a cheese strap, but something a bit more specific and niche. And one of the beauties of having first pick is you can do these very kind of niche bands because you have complete control over what you first pick and what you leave. Like, you'll often see a team with first pick kind of do these weird, unheard of bands like an Ursa. Or if it's not unheard of, it's normally not something Liquid's going to grab right away in the draft. But it's something you just you can take it away, and it's something they might look to use later on. I think what Team Secret have identified too is that when Liquid plays on the dire side, the heavy reliance on the Aegis, Eris is one of those heroes, and they just did open up the draft for themselves. So, like it was kind of like, okay, Liquid, you're either going to give us Earth Spirit, Chen. Like, are you really going to do that when we've got? Uh, puppy on our side, so no. So, so they get the Earth Spirit. Normally, they run a dual core with this, which would mean I think ideal candidate is the Misery Lone Druid if they want to go that route. Profit's already gone. Uh, anything else that comes to mind for you guys? Tide has been a pretty heavy favorite for them, but I don't know if they go for that commitment that early. Invoker is still open into the pool and. Talking about Weeha comfort picks, that has been one of them. For Team Spirit, they, uh, they, uh, yeah, no, they, they have yeah, Weeha play the Earth Spirit. That's and true. Not, not 100% but like 90 Have they ever run it not mid for him? Pai's, Pai's played, Pai has played one it game, once, yeah. yeah. Okay, but it's, it's very unusual. Uh, yeah, and that's probably going to be Pi's heroes instead. So, one thing that, that that Secret has actually been doing quite frequently is they went together with their Spirit and went for the Lone Druid and the Spectre. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what the route I was suggesting, but mm -hmm. uh, I think this shows just Puppy being someone who knows that his opponents will look to adapt in the draft, so he's not yeah. going to just copy-paste the same draft they've done before. Gets Lion, which is a more open-ended support option, and doesn't really reveal much about the lanes of the overall strategy. So, interesting point about Spectre. Spectre overall in the tournament is 10 and 5, including the previous match. Uh, but the last four games he was picked in, or she, rather, it was a win. Mm -hmm. How did Spectre develop, uh, band out here now as well, how did how did that hero develop in terms of meta? What changed for I the team? I kind of view it like Slark, where it generally gets picked fairly late in the draft, and often when you know what your opponents are looking to do. Uh, so, yeah, teams under you're not just throwing it in, like, first two picks every game. Yeah, the captains grew a better understanding of when and where to pick it. There's, like, if it's a bad Spectre game, or if it's a game Spectre's not going to fit in well, you're going to be able to tell that from the draft, and you're not going to pick the hero, but you can tell the games where it's like, this is it's going to be a good hero for this game, let's let's play Spectre. So, secret ban Lycan, uh, we're going to see the Phoenix ban, this to me is a tell that there's a decent chance they still want the Misery Lone Druid. Uh, like in normally a hero you'd ban either to limit the Roche potential or more often because you don't want to get pushed heavily early on. Liquid could go into a Drow still if they want to run a push strat, but that's not so much the Liquid way. It's just something we've seen other teams bringing out in this tournament. I think they want to pick Matama Man, something that has a little bit more weight to it. So what are just gets Man heroes? Like killed. Ursa's ban, there's Gyro, there's Ember. The Gyro, a bit less Ember, a... they went to the Anti-Mage a Slark. few times early on, yeah. Slark. So it could be decent this game. Yeah. Maybe a little greedy with the OD and the Prophet. Team Secret could still take the Lone Druid. It's really strong now that they banned out the Phoenix too. Yeah, yeah I think I think that's what they want. So no Spectre to go with it. Uh, what would be? I guess the question is, what would be the Envy here at that point? I really don't want to see them ultra greeted up like they did. The first time you saw Secret go for the Lone Druid anti mage, yeah, they had like no team fight okay. presence whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, that's I feel like that was not way too much. AM not a good matchup versus OD as yeah. well. Like, OD oh, actually can that. easily beat AM, even yeah. late game. Hi very high multiple hero beats AM. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I mean, the, the Ember Spirit's always a classic NP hero, like not the best hero against NP OD necessarily. Well, NP, depending on if you want to go the Orchid build, it kind of sometimes leans, leans you that direction, but. Ember's always a, a possibility for, for Team Secret in these kind of situations. Seems like Secret's debating if they should go for the Lunger. Sigil, pretty annoying. They have the just a lot of pure damage to kill it quickly with the OD. Uh, I don't feel like it's the best Lunger game, and we've seen Profit actually do well against them if they decide to mix up the lanes here. Maybe run an aggressive tri-lane or a jungler in an off-lane two-hero setup. So. What do you think then, Tide? Just for the team fight? <sighs> If they go tight, it's going to be an envy, like, hard carry, right? Yeah, yeah. Tighter Spirit doesn't take objectives, doesn't have any really good scaling. I mean, tight scale's alright, but you still need some damage. And 
There we go. Pile I die or it's it looks like. Yeah, I figured this makes this actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, OD versus I, I know Earth Spirit is uh we house hero, but Earth Spirit versus OD is so miserable to play against. And I think they've recognized that they prefer to play misery less on these kind of carry off laners now. They, yeah. they they in their very opening group stage match they played Nature's Prophet, it was a disaster, and then they just stopped picking Nature's Prophet altogether. I think they prefer to have him on the Tide, uh the Dark Seer, these more kind of initiated team fight type oriented heroes. And Beastmaster still on the pool as an interesting yeah, hero. I mean that vision advantage that it gives. The other thing that's nice about that is there's more options there. If you want to run a farming off laner, it's basically Prophet or Lone Druid right now. Maybe Broodmother, but there's really not much else. So it you have to get it earlier if that's the route you go. This is the mid-winning combo too. Earth Spirit plus Invoker. Yes. It's really hard to fight into that, even as an OD. Alright, so they get the Curl Rubik here. Some decent spells to steal, but I think more just a, a comfort here than anything else. How does that work with the Earth Spirit? You don't get the stones, right? So it's not nearly as effective? Correct. Don't think so. Oh, what a hero, Earth Spirit. You don't even get to steal. You, I guess you have the you have the Aura, which can be nice later on for Earth Spirit. I don't. It's not the reason you pick the hero. It's kind of a side bonus. Yeah, and you get that at such a late time because getting getting to level twelve is just the biggest nightmare in the world for supports. So Liquid are left now, just needing uh, likely Matumbo Man's hero for the safe lane. We'll see what that's going to yeah. be. As for Secret, they've got their support duo. They have their mid Weeha hero. Lots of options for Misery, you guys ran over a bunch. Yeah. Uh, and lots of options for Envy, it's just the Spectre band out, so I think Secret are in pretty good shape as far as what they pick going what do you into feel, these last two. What do you feel Liquid is lacking right now that they have to make up for in the last pick for Matoma Man? They're not that great at taking towers. Uh, they've okay Roshan with the OD. Maybe the Prophet's they... okay at taking structures, but on his own he's not exceptional. Yeah, I think they need something that can help establish tempo in the Radiant Jungle. It's some kind of fast pace like fighting Beastmaster. carry. So Beastmaster and Invoker, this is a very versatile duo. Good at pushing, decent at team fighting, great pickoff potential, yeah. good vision. They, Team Secret actually have really scary team fight right now. Like running into that lineup is going to be pretty difficult. Liquid, I think, are just going to have to have a lot more farm before they approach this fight. Probably get a BKB on your Outworld Devourer before uh, you take any fights. With Liquid, do you think there's something they've done a few times? Do you think there's possibility they consider just running Matum Man on the Nature's Prophet, picking up just an off lane alas for, for mind control? It depends, just because it depends on how you value the matchups. Like, there are some scenarios where you might be able to go aggro if you're Team Liquid and then pick something like Tide, because Tide destroys yep. Beastmaster one on one, but I think it's a little bit too late into the draft to adjust like that. And plus, if you're Matama Man, you probably want something that you know you're a lot more comfortable with, that you've played in the tournament. I feel like this is where Team Liquid is going to go for something a little bit more standard for him. So it's their turn to ban the pushing carry. They're going to remove the Drow Ranger. With the well-rounded lineup that, that Secret says, uh, that you said Secret has here, how greedy can they be for Envy's carry? Incredibly greedy, yep. especially with the Beastmaster. They oh, have. that is what they thought it was going to be. Yeah. They have really strong lanes already. I mean, Metal Man's played a lot in Nature's Prophet. Yeah. More yeah. going back further, but... I think it does work if you can get the tide so, against the beast. So then are you looking at like the, the gyro tri-lane, perhaps? Do you go aggressive here? Uh, gyro's pretty good in this position, but... Liquid might be a little bit. Fight around the, I mean, it's just the tusk with the gyro. Yeah. Other than that, it's not. I feel like they need. Great. Yeah. I think they're light need... on the team fight control. I think they need a team fight hero. Oh, oh, that's a different direction. So. Okay, so that is a. A fata hero. OD for safe so lane. So off lane profit for mind control. OD, safe lane death profit mid. Yeah. So fata mm -hmm. death profit. That is a lot of team fight now. Yeah. DP even weaker than OD against Earth Spirit though. That to me is a uh, secret big... of such good catch and burst damage to kill something like Death Prophet quickly yeah. in a fight. Yeah, that is a weird pickup because I. F it's a tougher Death Prophet game. I think it's like you said, said, David. It looks like they need a little more team fight, but I also feel like they're lacking on the control. So it was tough to find a hero that can do both at this point. Don't know if Death Prophet is the answer though. No. A lot of green heroes though. Gonna count for something. We have a yeah. lot of uh, red and orange for Team Secret. And a Slark to round it out with. Slark. Not as greedy as, as, uh, as they maybe could have gone for. That's pretty greedy. Oh, man. Yeah. Not as greedy well, as... Well, they have our spirit, so it's fine. Let's be honest here. If Ben was on this They'll panel... all three lanes. Yeah, if Ben was on this panel, he'd be telling me...
This game has been done from pick number one. Oh, okay, so okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pi, Pi's playing the lion. Earth Spirit for Puppy? Alright. Okay. I think this is Puppy's first Earth Spirit game ever. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> Actually ever or competitive? Competitive, competitive ever. How sick would it be if he literally never ever. played the hero and just like crushes That's all like the That's like Dendi at TI1. Like I've never played Enigma, just put me on this hero. I'll, uh, I'll, I mean, Puppy's a Dota Savant. No, sorry, not uh, do, TI1. Not that's yeah, that's yeah, pushing yeah. it even further. I mean, TI1 milk got fourth or something. I'm sure you could do whatever you wanted. Gentlemen, what do the fights in, these ga in this game hinge on? What needs to go absolutely seconds remaining? Absolutely right for either of the teams for them to take fights against Secret the other team. Vision uh, using the Beastmaster roll into Sunstrike, take your hero out of the the fight from the get go, and for Liquid, trying to counterplay that using the Snowball to save people, using the Astral. That's going to be kind of the the place to look out for to me. Okay. Uh, Liquid a little more volatile. Very important to anticipate the Earth Spirit's movements and be ready to counterplay it. We're going to find out who is going to take this second game in the winners bracket finals. Team Secret versus Liquid. Odi picks one Draskol. Take it away. Indeed, and let's get ourselves straight away and stuck in. Uh, secret, we're seeing some different stuff, Andy. How are you thinking about the EE Slark? And, well, for what seems to be one of the first times in least for a while, I can't remember ever seeing this before, the Puppy Earth Spirit. Well, we're definitely in for something a little bit different, but I suppose if you can win having not played a hero for two years, then you can probably win for not having ever played a hero at all, right? I mean, that's kind of like the same thing. If you haven't played a hero in two years, it's probably not even the same hero. So, I, I mean, it wasn't the Doom, to be fair. It's changed quite a while over the two years, Yeah, it's it? his professional Earth Spirit debut. There you go. Ooh. All right. I am I mean... definitely, <laughs> if I have to be honest, I am liking Secret Strap a little bit, but the Slark pick for me is something that I feel Liquid are going to be looking to punish here. Not really known as one of the strongest laners. They do have the Earth Spirit rotations, of course, to help that out, and a, and a Lion, too. But I think it actually helps the five mana Liquid to play against a hero like Slark, because he has to commit so hard to the engagement that fighting into things like, you know, an OD, an Exorcism, you're relying pretty heavily on Beastmaster Roar and the control that it gives you to take down a hero. Very similar to what Liquid needed in game number one. But this time around, you have Astral Imprisonment to save, you have Snowball to save, you also have a Rubik, he can go for steals and such, so I think Liquid have a pretty good shot too. And we talked about um, MV Slark, why the Slark this game? I think it's the kind of hero where if you reach a certain stage in the game, and the kind of lineup that Liquid have, Rubik, Furion, Tusk, these heroes don't really have ways of dealing with Slark during the mid late game, it's very hard for them because he can just get in and out of the fight so fast, he's extremely mobile. And once he gets a certain threshold to farm, so you see a roll here. Oh, puppy! He's got to be careful here. This is his first showing as the Earth Spirit, and it might be the first death there for Secret, as it looks like it will be. First blood for Liquid. The first time puppy dies in competitive there is Earth Spirit. Yeah, that was, um... It's a little bit strange. I'm pretty sure he had vision, too, because it's daytime. We can see Envy still being pressured here in the safe lane as well. This is a really rough lane, actually, even in a 2v1. Stun onto mind control. Envy has got the bounce. We can see Poppy. Oh, misses the slow, and Envy misses the jump. The crowd are loving it. Secret, not so much as mind control slips through their fingers. It's his first game, guys. Give him a break. Come on. But this is the start that Liquid are, are going to be more than happy with. Free farm for the OD, middle lane's going well, Jerax just being a, a nuisance here. Mm, Misery's going to give this the right run down here with the ball slow. Yeah. Jerax has a snowball, uh, Misery's not going to continue to chase. But uh, at the moment, in terms of the farm as well, things looking to be going Liquid's way here regarding the laning stage. For sure. And if they can get that 5 man going, get that death profit ulti, start pushing towers. They do have a team that is very capable of doing Roshan. You got Frozen Sigil, you have the Treants, of course. OD does an insane amount of damage as well because of the pure damage from that orb. I think Liquid are feeling pretty good about themselves right now. In Jarex's position, he, he does not want Misery to find much from this side camp. The Iron Talon Bird is not going to be much use, but there's nothing to use it on Jarex. Each and every time coming in, needs to be a bit careful. Now Misery. He should find the space here to finish off the, the Smasher. Jarex. Okay, now Puppy hits on point this time. There's the slow there, and with that, oh, nice escape from Jarex. Tries to look to deny himself here, but he ends up killing the Smasher. And off the back of that secret, they will kill him. Misery with the kill onto Jarex. And Puppy. He turns up and he's on point that time. Yeah, there we go. 
Uh, that's what we're looking to see. The rolls connecting, getting a kill on the board, going the way of secret. I was going to mention that the static laning phase is kind of favoring Liquid in the sense that if you can harass the Beastmaster this much, I don't think Liquid are as reliant on the Tusk having levels as they are on the Beastmaster having levels because they need that roar to be able to secure kills during the, the early mid game. So if they can keep pressuring like that, and if they can keep having mid and, and safe lane trade the way that they are, Liquid are still looking to be in a pretty good position, even that death was standing. Envy is uh, getting the space to farm up now, though, relative to OD, also on the side of Liquid. Both heroes 22 for 4, 21 for 5, very close between these two carries. I mean, in terms of that, who who do you kind of expect to see starting to make the first rotations here on the Slark and the OD? Who's going to be the more active core towards the mid-game? It's kind of hard to say. If you look at the lanes individually, I would say that middle lane is probably quite easy for Liquid to kill. Like, an imprisonment probably just kills we once you get to a certain level. But you could also say the same thing for Mind Control. Like, that hero is very easy to take down when you have a line because it's two stuns, which means you can start with a, a spike and then you can hex afterwards. So, it's like we'll be seeing some movement mid. Poppy is coming over with a haste room. We'll see how far Liquid want to dive because they've got to be careful of Poppy. Poppy coming in with a stun. Butters in the tower. He's getting the siphon off onto Weeha. Mind Control coming in as well, but Wee is going to get out the slow from Puppy. He'll roll into Mind Control. He's still got the haste room here. Puppy. Ah, uh, Telekinesis from Kuroki pulls him in. There's four on Liquid, but they can't quite control Puppy. He's going to be fine, but Puppy does save Wee's life there. Yeah, really good stuff coming out. Nice stun. He's going to get the bounty as well. Uh, <laughs> All right. Oh, he might hey, get short blocked here. He might pay with his life here. Let's see what he can do. Can he get himself out of this one, Puppy? It's it doesn't look like it will. Yeah, there's a telekinesis. And he's going to be able to roll that. Puppy. Oh, fade bolt to the back. Bata had a lot of confidence in his teammates there. He was just like... Yeah, I'm, you guys are fine. You got this kill. I, I believe in you. I'm just going to chill here and keep in creeps. But nonetheless, you can't argue. Puppy certainly catching the attention of Team Liquid and, and making space around the map for his team. It does give a little bit of time for Misery to get a little bit of farm in. He did get that one oh, kill. Oh, they've spotted Kuroki coming around here for this one. A secret. They're ready to trap him in from all sides. Tried to come in for a bit of a warding mission, but he will pay with his life there. And that's very nice here for Weeha, able to step away from the mid lane and pick himself up a kill on the Invoker. Now we've seen the kind of performance we can have if you give him even a little bit of room when he gets a hero that he's comfortable on. I think the panel were also talking about that during the, the pregame. But, you know, Mind Control, he's level four and a half too. He's getting quite a bit out of his lane in comparison to what the Beastmaster has. I mean, this is three CS at six minutes. It's not really the, the most amount of farm that you can get, of course, but... It's a very hard lane to be in as Beastmaster because if Imprisonment gets cast on you, of course, Matuma Man doesn't have it. But it's really hard to know that for sure without having, you know, checked yourself. Just means that one Banish can just be your end, more or less, in this lane. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure OD, like, almost one shot the summons at this point. Jax, Kuroki, there are smokes available. Come back towards the mid lane. As you were noting as well, we're six minutes in and, uh... Mr. Eternal Envy just 100 gold away from his Midas, so he's going to have a very nice timing on the Midas this game. The Slark, and here's just smoke rotation. Kuroki and Jarex, see what they can achieve around towards the mid lane. It looks like they've got their eyes on Weeha. Exorcism is up. They want to try and make a move and try and push the tower off the back of it. They can certainly go for it, but look how safe Wee's playing. He knows something's up. Really nice movement from Wee. The other thing about this gank is that Liquid actually aren't carrying dust, so they need to kill him before he has a chance to use the spell. Oh, Puppy might tank the gank here. Oh, Puppy. Oh, oh Jarrett's was down, yeah. No, they pinged it. I think they saw him for sure. Okay, maybe just aware that something more could be coming around as well. Yeah. As I believe Envy had left the lane, so they couldn't quite see him. And yeah, as I said, Envy with the Midas picked up at 6 minutes 46. And now level 8. Uh, it's getting past the point where you can really punish this Slark in lane. Now he's got the, this amount of levels. In terms of Liquid's lineup, do they have the kind of the control to deal with this slot? I think they have a, a decent amount. Like, if you lift and silence in between a, a dark pack use, you can definitely kill him. But it's going to be tough. I mean, this is probably one of the harder teams to lock down a Slark that I've seen. Typically, you want something like AoE lockdown, like Fissures or, you know, Earthshaker is a really prime example because you want stuff that can hit inside of the Shadow Dance. But Liquid really have only the mana drain that you're going to get and the damage from 
Sanity's Eclipse coming out from a Tomb of Man, and then they have like a Death Prophet, and that's it. So there's no real like AoE lockdown. It's mostly just single target spells that they have to rely on, which aren't necessarily the greatest against a Slark. You know, mid lane weave, just pushing out the lane, and he's gonna pick himself up a haste and maybe look towards top. It looks like the yeah, tower's already gone here. Liquor will be able to claim that one. MV just backing up towards mid. It looks like he's not going to be able to join the forces up top. He needs to just continue with the farm game. We're talking about the farm game of Tumor Man 4.5k on this OD. Talking about uninterrupted safe lane as he is certainly having a great time in terms of that. And starting to work towards the drums over the treads. And the Maven. Let's see if they can get this tier two. At the same time, there's a fight kicking off mid. Fado with the Crypt Swarm and the right clicks. Wee's going to get taken down. Outplay in the mid lane. The Death Prophet too strong for the Invoker to deal with. And at the same time, Liquid doing that a significant actually, amount of damage to the tier 2. That's super bad. Like, dying in a 1v1 situation like that. They didn't even use Nature's Wrath. Like, the Wrath of Nature, excuse me. That, that is very unexpected. Thankfully, Misery is able to deny the tower, so it kind of lessens the blow a bit. But like oh. you were saying, <laughs> nice TP, TP cancel there from Puppy. But they just lose two towers and their mid-die is 1v1. That is a really big swing of momentum for Liquid. Uh, Jax is going to get a nice deep ward down here. He's eyeing up Puppy, but the rest of his team have left. Jax is going to be fine. Beastmaster Misery coming around. He's got his level 6 out as well. If you can get a Primal Roar onto someone, maybe Matumba Man. That would be a lovely hero to catch out for Secret. Let's see if they could do it. He's on the tree up the lane, Puppy's trying to close in, get out to the range up, and he will find the initial stun, Misery. He's not going to commit, though, with the roar. They don't really have any follow-up, but we are just a little bit too far away to, to commit to that kill. Yeah, it's... There's a lot of trying to pressure right now from Liquid. They want to make sure that they're getting the most they, that they feasibly can out of this early game. They have Death Prophet ult available, too, for this bottom tier push. No glyph. Liquid just seems to be rolling on all cylinders here in game number two. They are just not stopping when it comes to the aggression. If they get this tower without DP ult, I think they can even go Roshan if they wanted to. If they see that Puppy's not level six, no magnetize means that it's a lot easier for Liquid to take these full on engagements, and they might take that opportunity to take even more away from Secret. In the jungle, there's your roar. It's a finger sunstrike, Matumba, man. Blown up there by Secret. Not a chance for the OD and a very, very nice rotation from the boys on Secret. They do get the safe lane tower though in that time, so they could not just going to lose a hero for no reason. I'd say in terms of what they've done in the early game, they still have a little bit of a way to go before they're going to feel super comfortable, but they're definitely having a much better start to this game, I feel, than game number one. Seeing the bottom lane, Puppy trying to find his level 6, as you said. It's going to be something very key for competing against Liquid, especially in these engagements around the Roche pit. And as you suggested, Liquid are going to use this opportunity to go in. Secret. Well, they do have that ward out. I think they, they are aware that's going on now, especially with the Sutra. They know what's going down here. They're they waiting like they, away. Yeah, they realize they just can't contest it, and they're just trying to find a trade. And The trade will be Bolux with the tier 1 top if we are can get this. Yeah, this is fine, honestly, for, for Secret at this point, because they, again, and they needed Puppy to be level 6 Ooh. for this. And they want to fight top Liquid. They'll get the Roshan. The Kuroki. If he can catch up, we are with his telekinesis. Maybe they could do something. Fado's coming in with the cover of smoke. Starts to siphon off onto the Invoker. Mind Control keeping it as well. We are. He's going to lose the TP out, but the Shards oh. come through. We are. Oh, he makes it out here. He makes it out. But they will lose misery there on the Beastmaster. But we surviving only just. That was damn close. Very nice movement though from Liquid, securing their safe lane tier 1 as well. And there's Blink Dagger on Matumba Man too, so he's got drums, got Blink, Aegis available. I mean, amidst Puppy. this all... Oh. He could be in trouble here. Uh, that Blink reveal from Matumba Man if he comes in and he will... Oh! Oh, he hit the creep! Matumba Man. Alright, I think that was a kill if he didn't hit the creep there. Would have been incredibly close. And especially with the sanities, he might have had to pop the ult, but... Well, he could have also banished, because he was mid-roll. That was weird. A little bit of a mechanical mistake there. Now, one thing we've got to note, though, MV is still finding a really good progression on the slot. Yeah, he is farming K, he's, he's having super a grand well. old time. I wonder if he goes for Blink this game, or if he just opts for Shadow Bleed. It's kind of hard, I think, in these types of games to go for an initiation item when the enemy team has such overwhelming team fight. Well, MV. There's more moving in as well. Farta and Jarex around the corner. 
plays it cool. He just knows that it's very hard for Liquid to actually catch him. So he's playing it as greedy as possible to force Liquid to react to his movement. I think it's definitely the right way to play in this scenario. Can they catch up Jarex here? Puppy rolls up, gets the slow onto Jarex, kicks him back towards the rest of his team. Finger from Pilot over the tree line. The stun to follow through as well, and a very clean kill for Secret. Can we just for a second talk about the fact that the Pilot die almost has Blink Dagger? That's kind of crazy, right? Like, Envy's been taking a tremendous amount of farm. Puppy took the lane bottom when Envy was farming the jungle just so he could hit level 6. So it's not as if Pi has had a, a tremendous amount of space. I suppose he does have a little bit more CS than Puppy right now, but... Secret almost getting all the items they need and all the levels as well to start looking to take team fights of their own accord. And like you were saying, Envy just farming away level 11. I think if they have all these abilities available and a blink dagger on Pi, he might just go blink for the added benefit of being able to take a team fight and just take a hero out straight away. Because a blink pounce with Shadow Dance up and a Lion initiation with a Sun Strike, that hero should die almost no matter what. Unless there's like a very fast imprisonment or a snowball save that is just instant. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. It's gonna be interesting to see what the Timberman does after these drums. On, on the safe lane OD, what's he gonna be thinking about next here? A lot of the ODs we've been seeing like to go for the ATOS, but I kinda am citing... I think it was Will who said he needed early BKB this game. I think that early BKB is really nice because you have a Death Prophet to help you with the team fight damage. You don't need to be like that position one carry where you're doing everything on your own, like all the heavy lifting. I think he could play it a little bit more defensive and just ensure the fact that he's not going to be taken down too easily and just make sure that he gets his guaranteed damage out as opposed to going for an item that could potentially get him killed. At the moment, both teams just looking to trade sides here. Liquid for the tier 2 bottom, Secret onto the tier 2 top. Necrobook's now done on Misery, so their push is going to become even faster. Uh, we have TP into the lane from the Tumba Man. Misery and the Envy will bail. They don't want to stick around and fight that for the time being. And, uh, maybe does Envy want to go try for something mid lane? He's eyeing a mind control by Lucid on the slot. He's just going to cut the lane here. Keep the pressure on on the mid. Needs to be careful because it is forcing Liquid to send a fair few heroes towards this area. It's so annoying for Liquid. <laughs> like, this is the big reason why Liquid were so focused on trying to get the tier 1s down and make sure that they were the ones who were going to get Roshan. Because if Envy is allowed to do this for the entire game, there will reach a point where he has too many items to actually deal with. And even though they're having a hard time killing him now, it's not going to get any easier. Alright, here we go. They're going to try for it. Everyone's coming and he just shadow dances and TP's out of there. Four heroes coming back for the... <laughs> Alright. That would have been close. a real kicker there. Yeah. I don't know if Liquid are even going to get a chance to use the Aegis though. That's really one of the other problems that they're having. It is obviously good to take it away from Secret, but at the same time, they need to be objective gamers. They need to abuse the fact that there's level 2 exorcism up on Fata. They need to make use of this before it fades. I'm looking out to see what they can achieve on the mid lane. As you said, level 11 exorcism for Fata. Controls be left behind to clear out the top. Pilot Eye still hanging around. He's level 8. Has that blink and the finger off cooldown. He's going to use it straight in with a sun strike into the finger. Mind control deleted. Smooth moves there from Pi. Pilot pops the drums and how oh, Pilot die. He says, I'm out of it, son. Off you go. And again, this man just keep in line every time. That's what you got to do. The Secret are just playing incredibly well this series. Every hero knows exactly what it's supposed to do. Their communication has been on point. Their team fighting has been on point. Envy is doing pretty much everything that he can to be the biggest possible nuisance to Liquid and just realizing the limits of his character very well. And with the Shadow Blade pickup, Liquid have got to be even more careful about the positions that they put themselves into in there. I'm a myth. My going to be there as well. They drop a sentry. MV, what's the plan here? That's ah, just to jump out of the igloo and escape. There's, there's a lot of heroes coming through here. We'll get the shadow dance off. TP is available. As you can't use it at the moment. The sanity is going to get dropped is incredibly gone. early, but they'll punch him up and they will bring him down. A lot of hate for the slark there, but it is absolutely required from Liquid. I think he actually still had time to TP if he did it immediately after the snowball hit, but okay, at a lane. We'll see, yeah, but after cancelling the roll, Puppy's going to try and go for the TP out, but uh, it's not going to be there in time. 
Too much damage with the Spirit Siphon and the right clicks. Yeah. It was a really nice Sanity's Eclipse, by the way, from a Tomb of Man. It wasn't really for the damage as much as it was to just remove all of Slark's mana. Because if you do that, then he has no escape mechanism left. You can't Dark Pact, you can't Pounce Away, you can't TP. You're pretty much just dead to rights at that point if you can't abuse Fog. We'll see how much Liquid can do with this Texas season. I'll find the tier two. See if they could do anything as they go up to the high ground. Top lane, Misery. That has been caught out by Liquid. Matuma Man and Jerex are there. It was for a little bit of a split push, but he pays with his life. They'll take down the Beastmaster and do a significant amount of damage here to the tier three mid. We are coming in with the defense, moving on to mind control. Nice silence from Fire onto Pi and Envy. Envy moving in with the Shadow Blade, jump straight onto the Death Prophet. They will lose Pi and the Lion though. But Secret looking for the clean up here. They'll find Death Prophet. Mind control will be able to TP out. Losing the Lion, but getting that very, very valuable Death Prophet kill. It's still a very close early game here. I think as the game kind of stretches on, Liquid are probably going to be able to secure Roshan's as long as they don't take an unfavorable engagement before it spawns. Because it's very difficult for Secret to get inside of the pit without having to commit into things like Exorcism. Obviously you have to worry about the Tusk initiation as well and the ability to save from a Tomb of Man, not to mention just the sheer amount of damage that he does at this point. So, If Liquid play it steady, I think they still have a good shot. but. That Slark is going to be such a huge issue for them soon. Like, Envy died that one time. I still feel like in that situation you can live on Slark because he's just that kind of hero. But if he gets, you know, one or two more items on top of what he already has, good luck ever killing him. And at that point, your Rubik is going to be food. Your Nature's Prophet could potentially be food, depending on if he wants to go Basher or not and just chase you down. Liquid are going all in on the team fighting items as well. Like, Mind Control's gone for drums in the mech. Obviously, you have drums in the Death Prophet as well. Like. Liquid are basically team drums, so they realize that they need to control the tempo of the game. And as you said, Envy Slark certainly seems to have been the pick for him this game. And he's playing it very nicely at this point. You see Puppy working towards the Veil of Discord. Indeed, as you suggested, Matuma Man looking for the BK being very close indeed. Just a few hundred away from the Mithril Hammer. It's possibly the biggest power spike that they can get for the hero at this stage oh, in the game. Oh, Envy on to Kuroki, and Kuroki no chance. And oh, Envy doesn't have enough mana. He's only got mana for Shadow Dance, no mana for TP on top of that, and they'll silence him up and they'll take that. Losing a Ruby, getting a Slark, Liquid will have that at trade any day. Before. Maybe he just wasn't expecting as many heroes to be in the area. Rubik for Slark, not not the trade, definitely not, but it does buy a little bit of space for the rest of his team. Pi was chilling out bottom with the Invis rune, just making sure nobody was going to be rotating on the puppy. And with the BKB done, I would really like to see Liquid start to move. Roshan's going to be up uh, less than two minutes, so... This is around the best timing Liquid could look for to take a, an engagement. Let's see what the time is here with Jarex and Kroki. Things are coming out onto Puppy. They can catch him and lock him down with my control as well. They should certainly be able to. Jarex rolls in, gets the punch off, and there's Kroki with the lift up Puppy. Not a chance for him to escape. At the same time, mid lane. The Timmer Man blinks in. They're looking to keep the pressure on. See if they can find something here. Wheeze around the corner, drops the Coles uh -oh. down. Pilot I gets the hex off. Doesn't show it's going to be off point here. But is it enough to hold back the OD from the Lion? It's a man of Fado coming in full force down the mid. Envy is there, and Fado, he's going to drop the Exorcism. Forcing Envy back there with the Siphon, and they're going to break the base there in terms of the Tier 3. Rax now exposed in the mid lane. There's still 10 seconds without Puppy on the defense. Let's see how much that they can do here, Liquid. Necro 3 now picked up by Misery. Secret needs to find a big opening to jump in. You can see Envy trying to wrap around the back. But they've already dropped a sentry here, Liquid on the high ground, so it's going to be hard for Envy to catch them out if he comes too close. Stump from Puppy on the side, they'll follow it up into the Tumor Man, Bigger as well, and Envy trying to pick up the wing at the back, go for Kuroki, definitely Blast goes through here, they're going to find one, they'll find the Tumor Man, wing for Kuroki, trapped up in the trees defensively, but it doesn't matter, Envy still closes it, takes it down, they'll lose Puppy though, the Magnetize, he gets it down, time is doing a hell of a lot against Liquid, Fada falls as well, three dead on the side of Liquid, Jarex pops back the shards, trying to get himself out of this one, but Envy will chase this down by the looks of it. Looking to see if he can find a fourth pick off the secret, really secure the success of this team fight. And it looks like he will. The snowball coming forward, but the dark pack timing is there. And Envy turns around, takes down the Tusk, double kill for Slark. Suddenly now sitting on 3.6k gold. They'll lose the range racks, mainly racks still stand, and that's exactly what Secret needed.
time. A Tuma man just gets annihilated before he can even pop BKB. At that stage, Liquid have already lost a team fight. Like, they can't win without their OD. It's just not the initiation that they needed at all. They did get the melee racks down to about half HP, got the ranged. Roshan is available, but Secret don't have the greatest team for killing it right now. And they also don't really have that much time either. So Liquid could take this opportunity to get Roshan themselves, as long as they don't get anybody extra picked off. They'll have Nature's Prophet TP, they'll have everyone up. The only ultimate that they're really missing that matters too much is the, the Death Prophet ult, and that's going to be up in about 40. So I wouldn't be too shocked to see Liquid go for that play, and then go straight back down mid to try to finish that Rax. This slot very much got the potential to get insanely out of control. And I guess you look towards heroes like the Death Prophet, and you ask yourself, how well is that going to scale as it goes on? And there's going to be a point really where you're Liquid, and a lot of pressure is going to be on the Tumor Man's OD to carry through against the slot. Well, the problem with the OD Slark matchup is your ability to hit the hero. When Slark gets low or is ever in a situation where he's in danger of dying, he just uses Shadow Dance, resets the fight, heals a tremendous amount, and OD with the Blink Dagger can maybe chase him a little bit, but the mobility is definitely in Slark's favor. And with that in mind, OD's biggest strength is being able to hit heroes who are either disabled or don't have any escape mechanisms of their own because his sheer damage output is ridiculous. So if he gets the ult off, he, he managed range the Slark, he gets a couple hits on him, I could very easily see Envy dying, but if the former is true and he's able to get his ult off and get a couple of quick picks, then I can easily see Secret taking the team fight. But Roshan being done here by Liquid, no real surprises. They're just taking the time right now, Secret, to split push the lanes, make sure that when this Roshan does die, Liquid are going to have to go back instead of pressure right away. Ooh, Matumba, man. Oh, oh misery. So close. And Matumba, man, able to keep the Aegis intact. Gets himself back out, that Puppy and Envy. Not high ground. That is just Scardy now picked up by the slot. So he is very ready to fight. This is getting to really scary territory. Even with the use of the Aegis, it's going to be an uphill struggle for Liquid, I think. The other issue that they're having is the burst damage on Secret is crazy high. And they now have the Veil completed on the Air Spirit in conjunction with that. So. Vanish here. And Pi, no way of getting out of this one, but Summer Man, he's not messing around there. Envy? Can he try and pick, pick something up off the back of this? He's gonna look for Kuro, a lot of hate on the Rubik this game. Oh. Kuroki, Sunstrike on point, they'll get that now, Puppy. Rolling up to the Summer Man, the opening's there. You use your BKB to kill Pi. I'll turn around and kill you as soon as it comes back off, and here we have it, Envy moving in. They take down the Aegis. But Tumor Man will astral himself here, but it looks like Secret should be able to stick around, finish off the OD. The mech comes out, not quite enough. The Sanity Eclipse not doing a much at all. Well, maybe with Barter they can clean up. Silence onto two. Spirit Siphon as well. MV fully glow, pouting away, will get himself to safety. We are won't be able to do the same. He goes down on the Invoker. MV hiding around in the tree here. Nine control, and they're not going to be able to trap him out here. Envy with the pounce does escape. So they get themselves the kill onto Matumba Man, but they do end up losing Weehar on the Invoker for that. Uh, Misery could be in trouble here too. Oh, he's got the raw holding in place, Jerax. As you said, Fada still with the remainder of the time on the Exorcism. TP's down to bottom. He's got Jerax's back. And now with that pickup as well, Liquid are going to be very happy with that turn of events. Well, they do lose the tower, and they also use Exorcism for a fight that... I suppose killing two cores is alright. At the end of the day, you lost the Aegis on the OD. He dies two times. And you know that you can't pressure anymore because you lost your second life advantage on the, the biggest core in terms of damage dealers on your team. So, I don't know if they're super happy about that, but... It could have been a lot worse. Yeah, I, well, everything can always be worse, so it's true. It's just not exactly what they were looking for, is all I'm saying. Well, let's see. Now 13 to 15. Look at the difference in terms of the overall team net worth. It's only 1k favoring Secret. Is it still an incredibly close match in terms of the numbers? Yep. It's just, as you said, just looking back at the drafts and how this is going to scale as the game goes on, and the fact that the majority of that net worth for Secret is on Envy's hero. Slark, 15,000 at the moment. That's the real scary thing here for the side of Liquid. A lot of it just boils down to what the supports can accomplish at every stage in the game. So if you look at secret supports, I think that Lion is much more useful and also maybe a little bit easier to utilize in fights than a late game Rubik, especially when you're playing against a hero like Slark. Slark is like the anti-Rubik. Your one disable against him pretty much does nothing. And then if you get caught by a pounce, even with the four staff, he's just dead. 
Like, not his team can't help him. Look at what happened to, you know, top lane two times now. He just gets killed, even with his teammates just standing idly by going, well, uh, we wish we could do something, but we just can't. Because Slark's mobility is a little bit too high. And the Tusk is pretty much the same story. This hero is meant to be very aggressive, control the tempo of the game. As it stretches on, having a Blink Dagger is going to be nice for saves, but they're also kind of lacking in the damage category. You look at heroes like Earth Spirit, well, I think, um, Everyone knows what this hero is capable of, more or less. He does a ridiculous amount of damage, can hit multi-hero stuns, easier than probably anyone else in the game. Good silence, good mobility. Liquid though with the smoke, looking for some action. We can get a jump on to wait. They're gonna spot him with the ward here. It would be a big kill. Father's gonna make sure he gets that silence in in time, and while with the stun to the setup, they'll follow through with the silence, and now with the siphon, they'll chase that down. No escape for the invoker. And that's uh, going to be down for 60 seconds. Does have buyback here, and I'm sure Liquid will be very happy if they're able to try and force that out from the side of Secret. Envy now. Seeing if he can lead it from the back. They do have a sentry down, so they will see him coming in. But in fact, it's going to be Envy jumping straight away onto Batuma Man. He'll show himself defensively. Jarrett's trying to come in and force him back. He's got the dust. Envy silenced up. Can't get the shadow dance out. Envy could be in trouble, and he is. Gets taken down. That sentry there, ready and waiting for him to look for that greedy wraparound. Massive, massive thing for the side of Liquid. And now they might even be able to force uh. out too. Fingers straight down to Fada, but he pops up EKB, Exorcism still up, and Poppy's been silenced. Punched up into the air and brought straight down. They'll get a triple kill as well as Matumba Man pummels onto Pylite Eye on the side. On? And Liquid suddenly finding all the momentum they need. They break the tier 3 here in the top lane. Now, Secret, they do have a buyback on Envy. They're holding on to the buyback on Weeha. He'll be up in 10 seconds anyway. But they're going to need to surmount a huge base defense because there's not going to be much of it left. They've already lost the top melee racks. They're going to lose the mid ones by the looks of it as well. Ranged are already gone in both of the lanes. And Liquid, just like that. Just that I, I, I don't know what that was. That was so bizarre. Like, okay, Envy dies, but he has five back. Right, here we go. Let's here we go. Do Let's see what they can do at the back of this one. Jax is going to double himself up. Envy jumping in with the dark pad. The shadow dance as well, but he's been sprouted up. It's too much. He's trapped in the trees. But Man drops the sound. He's going to buy back on Misery. They've caught out Envy. Envy is going to get himself out of it, and he will. Now Puppy jumps in with a huge magnetize into the three. Jarek silenced up the takedown to Jarek's Tusk. Mind Control being chased down as well with the right click. The punches, the axis from Misery. He's trying to juke it out in Mind Control, but he won't be able to get himself away. Oh, he's going to live for a bit of time here at the moment father goes down in the trees they do still get the kill onto mind control so they'll lose four on the side of liquid but secret two sets of racks down that is not a situation that they saw themselves being in a couple of minutes ago i don't understand how that just unfolded so quickly it's like one hero gets picked your core has buyback envy pulled pretty much the entirety of liquid back away from the base and if he dies has buyback okay whatever we still have you know everyone available for the base defense that's fine but then they lose another hero, and then another hero, and they're all outside of the base pretty much, except for Pi, I think, who was standing high ground on uh, top lane. But as soon as that happens, and one or two heroes are missing buyback, Exorcism will kill your base for sure, and mid is already exposed. That was probably about the fastest I've seen a team going from being probably advantage in a game to just straight up losing. That was like less than two minutes. Exorcism of the defense, though, they're just holding themselves in. RP. The roll off. Broke, he won't be able to try to chase that, and Misery is there to back up the Earth Spirit. They want to try and go back in the front. Stump, I love that blinky forward, but Matuma Man just possibly getting turned around with the wrath of nature. Blows him up. Onto Matuma Man, holding in place. Heavy starting to steal the stabs up, but he gets picked up by the snowball there. Moving straight across onto Misery. Envy's still alive though. He needs to be the fight that Envy's looking for. He's found himself two at the moment. Exorcism coming out. He's trapped in the trees again. Sprout. Proving to be such an effective spell against these melee cores. Now it'll force Envy to get himself out. We get taken out by the Spirit Siphon, and again, Liquid. Now that's a big one. That's going to be Misery down for 60. They take down Wii. He does still have the buyback. But this is going back and forth, back and forth. And now it's the momentum that's just slowly being raised by Liquid and being held by themselves. Well, you get a huge influx of gold and also the experience that they got from winning the team fight that pretty much made them able to take the Raxes in the first place. So Liquid are looking super solid right now. And it's like we were saying, it's not necessarily that Secret had a huge golden experience advantage in the first place. Oh, oh the Hex! That's a big Hex. Oh, they get the silence as well. I'm going to take all the damage between these two to do anything about this. They're holding him in place with the Yules. Have another silence here in a oh, second. No. Envy, bouncing onto Fada, but he gets silenced up to get the Shadow Dance up in time. He's going to go for the TP here, and they, they'll get it! They'll get the Telekinesis off after the Shadow Dance comes out, and Envy's oh, over! Oh, the Mike is off, Roger, but Envy's down! My 
30 seconds on the sidelines for Slav. And that could be the kill that Liquid needed to take this game. It slowly fell apart for Secret and with no envy for 75 seconds. They're going to need some magic. They do have Weeha on the Invoker, but he's going to need a, a, a few combos and a half if Liquid come in hard hitting. But it looks like Liquid, they're not going to try and push this one out. And Secret, they will be given another chance. Well, Roche has up real soon. Secret are going to be scouting this out. I don't know who it was on the panel who said it was Cloud9 3.0, but that's really what it felt like to me when I just watched what happened in the last like five to ten minutes of this game. And there's now a full hex up yeah, on this OD. Hexes. OD and NP. Yep. I gotta say, if you asked me ten minutes ago who I thought was gonna win the game, I would have undoubtedly said Secret. It's actually insane that Liquid have put themselves in this dominant a position so quickly. Envy, it was he still only was 3.7k. Get to spend his god. I mean, what, what does he need to buy against this lineup? Does he does he need to go defensive as something like a BKB as well, or or can he afford to go for something great? Does he just need to be killing these heroes quicker? I mean, BKB is a, a safe choice. So basically, what you do is you use uh, you use Dark Pack to stop any incoming disables. Then you BKB. If you need to, then you Shadow Dance afterwards to recover nice some health. For it. Yeah, and then yeah. after your BKB wears off, you're probably going to have your Dark Pact again. So it's just about making sure that you're timing everything properly. But I don't know, I sensed a little bit of panic there in Envy when he got caught. Like, a lot of the TPs that he was doing later on in the game felt a little bit delayed. Like, he should have been able to live in that situation as well if he just TP'd instantly. Like, Liquid don't have any way of stopping Shadow Dance TP unless something is near it, or, like, some enemy creep is near to either snowball through or telekinesis on top of. So, I'm a little bit unsure as to how he even puts himself in that situation, but it is costing Secret big here. All eyes on the Roche pit now. Secret smoked up, and at the same time, Liquid, their position. Ready to jump in on anyone that reveals themselves. We see MV. Okay, Liquid are now away from the area, so Secret are going to be fine. Mine could try just keep the pressure on across the map. 2.1k gold on this man. Yep. 60,000 mind control. I mentioned on the panel before, this man's been having a great tournament and he's having a great game again here as well. Really holding his own on the natures. As item progression is also kind of completely scaled to what it needs to be. That Hex, of course, being crucial in getting that kill on Envy when he was inside of the river. A secret now just looking for any opportunity they can get. They they know they cannot get Liquid this Roshan. If Roshan goes Liquid's way, this is definitely going to be a next set of racks. It's too hard to fight into, given how much they've, they've been allowed to get in the last 5 to 10 minutes. So. Buyback still on cooldown for a minute here for Envy. Oh. You know, Envy jumps in. On some mind control. He's got to play this money. We'll get the Shadow Dial Fall Towns off in time. The BKB on the Tumor Man. He turns around, drops the Sanity. He's a bit of a loose misery. They'll lose Pilot Dial as well here. Puppy and Weehan. And Envy in the middle of it all. BKB being popped by Envy. Jumps for him. Can't get the rat drop to the Tumor Man. He's trying to chase down the OD. We'll get a touch on for the defensive Astral here. Buy him a Tumor Man some time. The Sun Strike, the timing. Oh, not quite there. He'll get himself out here. The OD. There's a buyback here from Mind Control on the Fury. Nice tornado coming down through the midst of the but they get the stun, the snowball onto Envy, Dark packs up, continues to run, will get silenced, Envy on the retreat, looks like he will be able to get himself out of there, but a bit of a messy fight, and we can see on the recap, a few buybacks exposed there, mind controls and pilot dies coming through, but off the back of it, the worst thing that the secret wanted there, they may lose Roshan, and as you said, this is going to be massive for Liquid, MV, okay, that's a freebie. That's a freebie, and it's a big one. 50 seconds, no touch. They can go on this. Oh, Kuroki getting shot forward. But he's there coming in as well. The call Kuroki out on the side, and he's going to go down. That's the room of 10. Now, let's see if Envy gets there back in. There's a huge stun from Pi. Onto Batuma Man. Final spot the BKB, but Envy, seeing it up the stands. He gets tied up. The silence is one of the media. Oh. The death of the class, so we are. This goes out by control. Just strike up Envy lives. The boy who lived, eternal Envy. And we are at his back just at the time it was needed. Fantastic combo from the Evoker coming down that choke point. A secret do it. They'll move into Roche, they'll finish it off, they'll get themselves the Aegis. And what a game two we've got here, Andy. Hi and we played that so well. They say, Envy, you might be position one, but let me carry that for you. Let me, let me just give that. Pi blinks, disjoints an auto attack, but doesn't blink so far away that he can't still cast text because it was one second I pulled down when the auto was in midair. 
so he hexes the OD, sets up the combo for Wii to drop a meteor deafening on him, and just completely annihilates Liquid. Brilliant re-engage, nice pick off by Envy as well when they killed Jerex to ensure that they could take that fight in the first place, just phenomenal teamwork from Secret. Now, I know it's Envy, but there's no chance that's a record. Nah, this is your that's abyssal. abyssal blade it's your sure. Yeah, that is definitely an abyssal blade. Envy. Not like this, Envy. Just, Come yeah, on. just walk by. <laughs> Keep walking. My heart can't handle that. Oh, oh, oh. I don't think my heart can handle that. Okay. Okay. We are in. Uh. Oh, God. Oh. I, I was like positive he wasn't buying a rapier. I was so sure I mean, that was going to be an abyssal blade. <laughs> but hey, you know what? You got BKB. Hey. You got the defensive items that you need. Hey, La Jackie Mayo. I wow. just. Oh, you can see why this guy's got the fan base he does. Yeah, no kidding. It's. If this pays oh, off. Oh, and there's a double damage. Oh. Oh, hey. envy. Ah, uh, all right, here we go. 700 a pop there, with the right auras. The first lock to buy Rapier, I'm not surprised about that in this patch. You can hear the audience every time Envy gets close to yeah. somebody. <laughs> you can hear Puppy as well. Sorry. Oh, Envy! Be careful. My goodness. Things have settled down at this point, though. Liquid, I think they're assessing the situation. They've got an MV Rapier Slark on their hands. So they've got to go around this smart. And with the items, with the two sides that they've got, they've certainly got control to deal with him. If MV makes one slip up, they have got the potential to catch out and bring that Slark down. Yeah, but with the Rapier, he's so terrifying. Like. If he gets a Shadow Dance off and he's able to hit Matumba Man for even a few seconds and there's no save from either a Snowball or... You know, obviously he's not going to be able to imprison himself if he gets stunned, but... This is an extremely high-risk, high-reward build here. For obvious reasons. And Liquid are just sticking together right now. They realize that it's it's past the 40-minute mark. Any team fight that goes wrong can just be total disaster at this point. I think both teams realize that. No one making any brash movements to do anything at this point. Two minutes still before the Aegis is reclaimed. This could be uh, one of the timings that's being waited upon. Well, they definitely know he has Rapier now. He showed it on the map. You can, like, feel the tension in the arena, by the it's... way. It's, like, palpable. This is one of those situations that, that only seems to come up in a secret game. Where you almost want to look away, but you can't. You just can't. I'm sure there's thousands of people at home at the moment glued to their screens. Ready for Envy to make the plays. Or, of course, the side of Liquid to do so. Now, this is a very tense situation for both teams. Very well understanding what's at risk here is the bottom set of racks are getting siege here by some trees. I wouldn't be surprised to see my control go back for something like Aghanims because in these types of situations when you have the racks advantage and you haven't even lost a tier 3, you can just idly pressure by spamming ult, forcing trains down the lane and then you have to always oh, have a hero down there. Clash here. They're moving close, Derek! Oh, 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 he's gone! Straight in and a couple of swipes from Envy. And a gem as well. Matt, oh. Pai's reaction time is so good. Like, obviously at high ground vision, but... Getting that Hex before a Snowball can even come out. I think if anything, that would be a bit of a wake-up call to Liquid. They've got to be very careful about sending people out across the map. I don't know if there's going to be anything happening until the next Roche spawns. I mean, the Aegis is going to get reclaimed very soon. And I don't think that Secret want to risk fighting with a Rapier and not having the second life on Envy. So it could just be positioning, abusing the Beastmaster vision, trying to keep mind control out of bottom lane for as long as they can, and just open up an opportunity to get that next Roche, because it's going to be up in around three minutes. It's probably the safest way to play, but heck, I didn't think that was going to be a Rapier, so maybe 
they just go for it anyway. Oh, oh God. Oh, MV. MV, okay. Oh, no, he misses the jump. He shouted out his up straight away. They're all on to Fada. They're looking to take down the death of it. But now there's no wall for Kuroki. Comes for all to his head. And then Puppy's there with a the solid defeat. Oh, the we are definitely cross. The massive Hadoukens coming through. Three dead on the side of Liquid. They're fighting for this one. And MV stays strong. Four down. Kuro, the last to fall. Dancing around with Puppy in the ring. But the slow strike brings Kuro down before Puppy's eyes. They're all dead on Liquid. It was a buyback from my control, but you've got to look at the buyback statuses and it's not good. No buyback available for Kuroki, no buyback available for Cherax, and no buyback available for Matumba Man. That Rapier... Oh, Moonshard as well. They're going for the base. Oh, it's going to make short work of the base. This is backdoor bump, bump, protected. Bump, look bump, at the bump, damage. Bump. <laughs> Liquid. They might have time for one more fight in this. My god. But it's gonna have to be a huge one. Look at that. That damage. Incredible. They got 20 seconds. I think they can get this and get out. Oh, oh they lie. Bye lie die. This man with the setup, the fingers and everything coming out to oh, all okay. die back. Oh, like oh, 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 oh. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Secret, just pulling out the moves this game. I really think at some point you kind of have to just give credit to Eternal Envy and say, if nothing else, he always puts on a show. No. I mean, the guy played extremely well the entire game. And Puppy, he's just starting up a, a hedge fund there. 5.7k. Well, he's got to have money for an extra rapier in case Envy loses his, right? True. Okay, going to ban Envy, he's going in, puts the BKB, turns towards Kuroki, Kuroki's got the Ghost Scepter. Envy, what's the plan? We ask come through as well, drop the Icefall down the middle of the open, some amount of the stun as he drops through the middle of the oh line. Envy, eating through the side of Liquid, one, two, double kill as he takes down Jarex, and now chasing down Fodder as well. They get the Hex off the stun from Puppy, Envy comes in, GG is called! 2-0 to Secret, and Envy does it with the boys with the Rapier Slug. Look at the emotions there in the booth. They can't quite the Secret. I don't think a lot of people would have believed this coming into this tournament. People talked about potential of disbanding, but no secret. They've come back as strong as ever. 2-0 against Liquid, a team that was really starting to get their form this tournament and a team that they very might well meet again in the Grand Finals because that is where Secret's going to be going. They will be your first confirmed Grand Finalist here at the Shanghai Major and Liquid feeling a little bit battered and shaken up after that event. I mean, they made it close. You got to give them that. In the second game, there was a point in which Liquid had a gigantic comeback. They played well, but I think Secret just took it to another level in the series. Absolutely, and of course, before going into this, both teams with a huge fan base and Secret, I think they may have just won over the crowd a little bit more. Look at the man, Envy. That's how he's playing all game. He's just playing with one hand, one hand in, one hand out, and here we have it. Secret 2-0, ladies and gentlemen. That is it from me and Andy, the casting panel, and we'll fire you straight back over to the panel. Wow. Thank you very much.